Title, Technical Aspects of Heart and Vascular Disease and the Role of Diet and Exercise in Their Genesis. Uh, I think that's a daunting title. Let me tell you what I intend to do today and I want you to, if you would please, help me make clear what I'm trying to communicate and that's this. Okay, it's very important to understand that. This is a hundred and how many year old observation and it's still true. For all of the advances in our understanding of the cause of that fact, that's still a fact. If you have youthful arteries, you deliver nutrients to the cells, the cells with provided with adequate nutrients heal better, regenerate better, you're only as old as your arteries. And all of us have some vague notion of that, but I want to make that a more precise understanding. You are in some important way only as old as your arteries. And we can measure that age in a number of different fashions. And that age might be of interest to some people. Uh, if, it's interested to, if it's of interest to you guys and how old am I and how old are my arteries and how old can I make them be if that's a number less than the number it currently is, that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, this is what I'm going to talk about trying to deprogram you from. I mean literally deprogram you. This has become superstition. This has become commonly held, almost universally taught truth that has a relatively complex but relatively shaky scientific foundation. And it's called the lipid hypothesis and you've heard it. And it is that fat causes heart disease or put more precisely or at least relatedly, cholesterol causes heart disease. And most of the time when physicians use the word heart disease, they really mean vascular disease because they're referring to the coronary arteries, the arteries that go to the heart. So what is the lipid hypothesis beyond this simple thing that we've all heard a million times? Well, as I mentioned, it's the dominant paradigm for 50 years. A lot of this was described as fatty plaques in early um, autopsies, but this really kind of became a buzz thought and therefore began to take over medical thought shortly after the Korean War, or actually during the Korean War. There were some, uh, well, autopsies, I'm, let's face it, on uh, young soldiers killed during the Korean War. There was a fair amount of evidence that there were these streaky, apparently, apparently, notice that word, apparently fatty streaks in the coronary arteries. And this, and, and, and I've, this is pejorative, I shouldn't put it quite this way, but it's to clarify a point. This notion that, gee, we see these fatty streaks, again, apparently fatty streaks in the arteries is the same thing as the cause of the heart disease, or vascular disease, is based on the logic of if you are found in a garage, you must be a car. Now, I'm trying to point out a logic error that got us caught in the, this lipid hypothesis. Now, again, while I want to take away the, the mythic aspects of the lipid hypothesis, I don't want you to get the idea that there's something crazy about people that drew these conclusions. These were thoughtful men with data in front of them trying very desperately to deal with a real problem, and that's heart disease. But in any event, just because you find apparently fat in the arteries, it doesn't follow from that that eating fat put it there. And that's the, that's the logic error that got us maybe further into this hypothesis than we should have. Now, never very powerful or predictive, but always simple and convenient. Now, let me explain that because you have heard and correctly heard that, gee, if I have a high cholesterol, that's worse than if I have a low cholesterol. Let me give you an interesting quote on that. <clears throat> the epidemiologist, the lead epidemiologist from the Framingham study, and Framingham is the largest early data, database from which most of our current concepts of the cause of vascular disease were derived. And if you know much about what physicians and medicine and, and organized science to some extent have been telling you, well, it's all cholesterol, it's all fat. But according to the lead epidemiologist, and by the way, if you'd like to look this up, it was uh, quoted from the Harvard School of Public Health in an interview within the last two years, and I don't know the reference number specifically, but that's probably enough. He said, in Framingham, and Framingham is a big word to doctors, in Framingham, those who ate the most fat and ate the most cholesterol and ate the most calories 
tended to have less heart disease, be th more thin, and more fit. Now that's the lead epidemiologist, the guy that did all the, all the statistics out of the Framingham studies. And yet what has come out of the Framingham studies as a synthetic view is fats, ki fat kills, cholesterol kills. Now there's some subtleties here I don't want to gloss, but I want you to hear that. There was something wrong with this paradigm. And notice I say it's not very predictive. Um, there's a book over there you might like to read, and a version of it you can easily get called The Heart Disease Breakthrough. And he refers to some collective st uh, statistics that point out that cholesterol, LDL, HDL, total cholesterol, and triglycerides specifically identified about 20% of people who are even at risk. Put another way, 80% of people who have whatever cholesterol number you want to have that have coronary artery disease have cholesterol numbers exactly like those who have no coronary artery disease. So there's something else going on and I want you to begin to think about that because I found as we've talked to people about changing their diet that conviction that it's all fat and cholesterol that kills has literally impaired them beginning to change their diet in a way that really begins to correct some of the metabolic numbers. So we're going to take that idea apart. I hope I have given you enough to reason to doubt it. Now let me show you an alternative idea. Well, you know what that is. It's a cross-section of an artery. Now, I want you to keep this in mind. We may come back to it if I can figure out how to operate this. Um, but the thing to recognize is this is an artery. An artery is not simple. I don't know if that picture is very clear. I guess it's not. But what you see lining the artery, this thin thing right here called the endothelium, there's a lot going on there. And I visualize that and tell people to visualize that, that your arteries are a bunch of tubes and there's some tiles lining the tubes and the tiles lining the tubes are the endothelia and you've got to remember these little gaps here because those are very important. We'll talk about those gaps between the cells. But the point is tubes lined with tiles and gaps between the tiles. That's where the action is. What happens in the endothelium is what causes vascular disease. Did you? No. Okay. Um, now a more complicated story but a better one. Now better in a couple of, excuse me, better in a couple of senses. One, it's better, it's more accurate. Two, it's better, it actually gives us some freedom and some precision in addressing vascular disease that just the lipid hypothesis does not allow. The lipid hypothesis does not comprehend the, the complexity of the things that you need to do to alter the course of vascular disease. Why are we altering the course of vascular disease? Because you're only as old as your arteries, okay? Now, I've got